Hello, theme bowl fans. Welcome to Skeletons Animals Unveiled at the iDrive 360 Complex in Orlando, Florida. Welcome. We're very glad that you are here. Let me tell you a little bit about the museum. We have 500 real skeletons, and we've got them set up in different exhibit areas. We've got photo wildlife, we've got reptiles, we've got marsupials, we've got dogs, we've got hoofed animals, we've got bats hanging upside down. We've got a wide variety of different kinds of skeletons all through over 40 different exhibit areas. As I mentioned, we have 500 real skeletons. They come to us as deceased animals. No animal was harmed, no animal was destroyed to build a museum. They come to us as deceased animals. We have a great working relationship with zoos and private parks all over the United States, and we get donations from these different uh, zoos and different private parks, and that's how we accumulate all of our skeletons. As I mentioned, they are all real skeletons, and we got them articulated or posed in natural environment settings. So for example, when you see birds, which is right over my shoulder, when you see birds, you'll see them in mid-flight. You'll see a bird on a perch. When we go over into the uh, New World monkeys and uh, uh, apes and primates, you will see uh, some of the uh, Pusinians uh, hanging upside down on branches. You'll see monkeys in different kinds of positions. When we talk about hooved animals, you'll see the three-toed and the four-toed hooved animals. We've got cats, and you'll notice some very similar natures of the cats. All of the cats, except for a variation of size, all of the cat's skulls are very, very similar. It really is kind of unique to see them. And we also have wild dogs. We've got domestic dogs. We have seals. We've got walruses. And one of the things that's really very interesting about some of the mammals that you will see throughout the entire museum, look at your own hand. You've got five digits, OK? A lot of these mammals, including the killer whale that we have, five digits inside those flippers. Same thing you see the polar bear, enhanced webbing for swim capabilities, but you'll notice that they've got five digits. Same thing with the seal. You see the flippers, okay? You just see the flippers inside, five digits. Really amazing. That's one of the very educational components of what we have, that all of the similarities, all of the differences of the skeletons that you will see, it really is something very, very fascinating. Tell you what, I want to show you the most rare specimen that we have, okay? So let's back up just a little bit, and I'll show you where this is. We have here in our hooved animals a variety of different three-toed and four-toed hooved animals. This one right in the middle, this is a Sumatran rhinoceros. This is the rarest of the skeletons that we have in the museum. There are fewer than 64 left in the world today. There are no more left in the United States, they're all gone. There are fewer than 64. We're very, very pleased and very appreciative of having this as a, a specimen in our museum. And we've got other rhinoceros as well. We have a black rhino, we've got a white rhino. And speaking of the white rhino, what we probably should do is go to our Africa exhibit and take a look at some of the very, very large specimens that we have. Want to go there? Yes. Let's go to Africa. Let's, Let's go. go. <laughs> These three specimens right here are the largest ones that we have in the exhibit area. You'll see the giraffe. That's about 13 and a half feet tall. Okay. Then you'll see the elephant, the, the African bull elephant that's behind the giraffe. That's an amazing, amazing skeleton. That weighs about 1,500 pounds just as a skeleton. Then you'll see the hippo, all right? The hippo. And we have a great photo opportunity here, okay? We ask a lot of people to stick their head in the hippo. That'll tell you a story, right? Okay? So if you put your head inside here, you go, <laughs> all right? The hippo is the most dangerous animal in all of Africa. More humans are killed by hippos than all of the other animals combined in Africa. Now, we tell people that story after they stick their head there. So when you theme go fans come and see us, all right, you're going to know what to do and you're going to know a little bit about the hippo, all right? Tell you what, let's turn around, let's take a look at the reptiles. We've got some major, major reptiles here. This is a Galapagos tortoise. We've got an Aldabra tortoise. These are two of the biggest in the world. The one behind, you'll see the alligator snapping turtle. When that snapping turtle was alive, he was the largest snapping turtle on record. 252 pounds. We also have several snakes, okay? Some people, ooh, snakes, <laughs> okay? See the python on the wall? That's over 16 feet in length, the python. By the way, it also has over 1,000 bones. How do we know that? We count it. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a king cobra as well. Now again, I mentioned how we articulate these. We've got the cobra articulated in that strike position. That's typically how you would see a cobra in that strike, that ready kind of position. Let's go to Florida Wildlife. We'll give you a little bit of a taste of uh, what Florida is all about. 
you'll notice we have an alligator. It's about a 12-foot alligator. We've got a black bear in some areas in central Florida. They have some problems with black bears getting into picnic baskets and getting into other kinds of uh, food containers that uh, some of the residents will leave out. We've got a bobcat and we've got an otter. We've got all the different kinds of uh, mammals and some fish that you would find in Florida, okay? Including, okay, now, first of all, yes, we take our business rather seriously, okay? But we don't take some of our skeleton appearances real seriously. We like to be a little whimsical, okay? See this raccoon right here? Yeah. He likes milk duds, right? <laughs> he likes milk duds, okay? So we gotta have a little fun while we're doing this as well. Another really cool attraction, penguins. Penguins is a big attraction for us. A lot of people love the penguins. You'll see that several are taxidermy versions of penguins, and then we've got the skeletons as well. Uh, they're very cool looking creatures. A pun intended, get it? <laughs> All right, okay, now we're gonna look at some birds. Let's go this way. We have over 60 varieties of flighted birds, meaning they have the ability to fly. We also have some flightless birds that do not fly. But you'll notice how we have them articulated. Again, we've got an albatross that is in mid-flight. We've got other smaller birds that are perched on, on branches. We've got a roadrunner that's in a running position. Okay? We've got um, uh, an ibis that has one foot raised, like typically you would see it. The same thing with a flamingo. And all of these different birds are real skeletons, just as all of our skeletons in the museum. The 500 skeletons we have are all real skeletons. Okay? We mentioned flightless birds. Our ostrich kind of keeps an eye on us. See how he just kind of, he peeks over the top of the, uh, the glass we've got right there. He looks over the whole museum, so he's kind of keeping an eye on everything for us. All right? That's what an ostrich does. He's not going to hide his head. Okay? Right, that's what an ostrich does. Okay, another interesting one. This one right here. This is a camel. Okay? We've got a camel. Some people will say, well, it's not a camel. There's no hump. Well, for a good reason. The hump is not skeleton structure. A hump is the fatty tissue, okay, and that's what contains the water and the moisture. That's why you don't see a hump on the camel. This is a camel, and obviously the skeleton does not have a hump on it, okay? Uh, let's see, what else? You, you want to see a farmyard? Oh, let's go see a barnyard, okay. Farming is very hard work. We appreciate the animals, we appreciate what the humans do as far as farming, and as you can tell, we've got a nice little barnyard scene here. We've got a steer, we've got a pig, we've got a goat, and yes, we have human skeletons. We haven't had a chance to talk about that. But in our museum, we have seven real human skeletons. And the way we're able to acquire the human skeletons, there are body donor programs. And these individuals donate their body to education, to science. And so we're very respectful of having these human uh, skeletons in our entire museum. But this is our barnyard routine. You can see all of the different skeletons we've got, including the barn owl that's up on top. And he's kind of keeping an eye on the barnyard scene. Fish. Let's talk about fish for a minute. See all of the different skeletons of the different fish. We've got swordfish, we've got uh, a snub nose pompano, we've got reef stone fish, a wide variety of different types of fish. These are very difficult to not only clean through our cleaning process, but also very difficult to articulate or put back together in their in their their, their, their form. The bones are very delicate, the bones are very sensitive, so we have to be very, very careful in how we and how we assemble, how we put the, uh, the fish back together. Now, something interesting. You will see over in this case, you'll see porpoise skull, you'll see a dolphin, you'll see different kinds of uh, whale skulls, but you don't see a skeleton of a shark. Let's look up here. You see the shark jaws, okay? You know why you don't see a skeleton of a shark? Why? I will answer that. <laughs> <laughs> That's because a shark does not have a skeleton. A shark is cartilage. And oh. you will not find a skeleton of a shark. All you're going to find are the jaws like this. Look at all oh, you're learning today. Huh? You <laughs> yeah. Come see us here at Skeletons, all right? <laughs> okay. Now, we talked about the hippo. Now, I don't know how closely you can get on this hippo, but let's try to do this. You noticed on the hippo that we looked at Africa, how the jaws were open and you probably saw the, the tusks and how sharp they looked. This is an example of the hippo having a closed mouth, but look at these tusks. Look at how they come together, and even in the front how they come together. But these are almost razor-sharp tusks, and they're real, 
And this is one of the reasons why a hippo is so dangerous, because if it catches its prey, or when it catches its prey, it's not going to let go. Okay? It's a very, very dangerous animal, so please, with all due respect, treat a hippo very gingerly, all right? I will. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, you've seen great big skeletons, you've seen medium-sized skeletons, and I'm going to show you the smallest one we have, right? The smallest one. I hope you can zoom in and see this, all right? Yes. Where I'm pointing this tiny little skeleton, it's an island shrew. See this little one right in front? Yeah, little, little tiny island shrew. Okay? They live in Alaska, but that's the smallest skeleton we have on display. Now, I think you're in for a real treat. Part of what we have in the museum as well is um, our flesh eating beetles. No, nah, don't turn it off, don't turn it off. <laughs> flesh-eating beetles, a very normal, natural part of the process. These are display cases of the flesh-eating beetles. As you can get closer, you'll see they're working on some skulls. These actually are coyote skulls that they're cleaning right now. You can see the movement. If you stay real steady, you can see the movement in there. Those are actually the flesh-eating beetles doing their job. Now, we have dermestid beetles here working. There are over 500 varieties of flesh-eating beetles worldwide. And again, as I mentioned, this is a very normal, very natural part of the process. This happens all over the world, but we find that these beetles are great for our purpose in cleaning skeletons. Here's what happens. Once we have a deceased animal, and we do all of the cleaning, and we remove all of the tissue and so forth, we'll get down to a skull, for example, and again, these are coyote skulls. We'll get down to a skull, and there's a little bit of a tissue that's left on that skull. Once that's dried, and it has to be completely dried, then we'll give that skull to the flesh-eating beetles and they will continue to do their work and they'll clean up those skulls, okay? They will, once, once, when, once the skulls are completely clean, we'll take the skull out of the tank and then we'll shake all the beetles off, okay? And then we put that skull in a chemical bath. That chemical bath is what cleans up and removes any microscopic bacteria, any other tissue that might still be left. And then what happens is if you want to turn around, we end up with bones, we end up with skeletons that are in varying forms of this kind of color. So it's a very normal, natural part of the process, but you see that the different shades of neutral, essentially, are what comes out of the, the entire cleaning process. Once we're done with that, then we have a, a creative team of articulators. They will then reassemble the skeletons into the positions and into the, uh, the various habitats that you see. There's no preservative, there's no other chemical that we need to add. These will last forever. These will last forever. So, that's a quick tour of what we have in the museum. Again, I can say we have 500 real skeletons here at Skeletons, Animals Unveiled in the iDrive 360 complex. Theme goal fans, you gotta come see us, all right? We invite you to come see us and have a fabulous time. Thank you kindly. Thank you very much.